A lot of people find slime and stickiness and like moist kind of disgusting, so... Now, we can all acknowledge how gross this actually is. I hate bugs and insects and somehow I've been living in Australia and managed to avoid anything disgusting and gross and that's probably because we live on the 25th floor. But snail mucin doesn't freak me out quite as much and I think it's because they move real slow. So I'm not as freaked out and they can't really bite me, so. Today we're going to talk about popular skincare ingredient snail mucin. I've got myself a cup of tea and we're going to talk about all the science and all the properties that snail mucin has and what it can do for your skin. And also at the end of this video I have a Q&A coming up from questions I was sent on Instagram about snail mucin. The video is entirely non-sponsored, I'm just super intrigued about this. I'm Dr. Sapna, I'm a doctor who suffered with acne and studied derm and luckily this makes me the perfect person to talk about it. So let's get started. What is snail mucin exactly? Exactly. So it is this like sticky slime. I don't know if you can see it. It is so sticky and it has this like stringy kind of sticky property to it. Ah, I'm going to spill it everywhere. Now, snail mucin is basically long protein chains with things like sugars, glycans, or lipids, which are fats. These extra bits are attached along the protein chain at lots of different points with different types of chemical bonds, and that's what gives this snail mucin all the different properties it has. Now, from reading lots and lots about it, what I realized is that no two types of snail mucin are exactly the same. What I mean by that is Different species of snails actually produce lots of different types of snail mucins depending on what that species is adapted for. There are literally thousands of different types of snail mucin. This actually means that they all have different properties. All of the data and science that we read about snail mucin is kind of unpredictable because it really depends on the snail itself. So for example, depending on where the snail produces this particular mucin, it will have different properties. A snail can produce mucin from underneath the shell and that's usually has sort of reparative properties. Where there's the snail mucin that comes from the bottom from around their like feet, that's what's used for slipping and sliding around. So will have more hydrating, slippery qualities to it. But that basically means that all the science about snail mucin and every single product is quite unpredictable. So I'll start off by saying that a lot of the information I got was from PubMed. PubMed is basically a database where you can search lots of recently published and up-to-date information, things like trials, things like literature reviews, that can really help you learn about a topic. I'll put all the references of the papers that I look at either on the screen or in the description box below so you can read it if you're interested. Now, first of all, I wanted to talk about the anti-acne effect that snail mucin has. This study from a Thai university discussed the effect on acne, specifically looking at mask acne during COVID. They did a randomized control trial, which is one of the best types of trials that can happen. That means there's usually two groups. One will be given a placebo and one will be given the intervention or the drug. And this is one of the few trials that has been tested on real people. It was done on a relatively small number of people, but actually compared to all the other trials for snail mucin, this is one of the biggest. They did a trial on 33 people in the placebo group and 33 people People using snail mucin. They gave the placebo group the same serum just without the snail mucin in it. They did this during the pandemic for people who were suffering with masne. They saw a very clear reduction in inflammatory acne lesions. That means there was a massive reduction in those big cystic red pimples, particularly when they were wearing masks and around the chin, those really, really painful under the skin ones. They actually counted the number of acne lesions before and kind of during their trial. So they did this over 12 weeks and found out that actually by the end of 12 weeks, there was a 34% reduction in inflammatory acne lesions. Now that's pretty amazing for a skincare ingredient that's pretty gentle and generally well tolerated. It's not like vitamin A or BHAs that completely dries out the skin. It's actually very, very nourishing and moisturizing. So actually for this to reduce acne is pretty amazing. What this trial really highlights though, is that they saw no reduction in non-inflammatory acne. Your blackheads and kind of under the surface congestion, that's what I suffer with the most. This doesn't reduce the count of that. Next, I'll talk about a study that highlights the hydration and the anti-wrinkle qualities of snail mucin. 
Now this study was actually conducted by a Spanish pharmaceutical company, the one that makes HelioCare product. They have a new line that's called EndoCare and the study was basically discovering whether or not their snail mucin complex that they have in one of the serums helps with hydration and wrinkles. This study was actually funded by the pharmaceutical company but it actually carried out in Singapore by scientists in a lab like any other study. It's difficult to say whether or not that would impact the result but you could argue that the people conducting the research would want to have positive clear outcomes Take from that what you will. They did also do a double-blinded study, which means that both the scientists and the patients didn't know which treatment the patients were getting. Now, the serum that they were studying in this product had snail mucin, as well as extract from snail eggs. They had 50 women between the ages of 45 and 65. They measured things like hydration, elasticity, and brightness using a number of different, sort of relatively accurate machines that would measure these things. Generally, they found that everyone's skin had reduced transepidermal water loss, and that means that the snail mucin was acting as a barrier to keep hydration in the skin. They noticed that because of this, the skin was more firm. Patients also subjectively and also on assessment from the doctors felt like their skin had an increased in smoothness. And that's probably because the hydration was kind of filling up the gaps and the tears between your skin and making it look more plump. What they did notice is that there was no real improvement in their periocular and perioral fine lines and wrinkles. Now snail mucin is also well known for having antibacterial properties and that's probably why it helped with the anti-acne effect that that first study saw. This paper that was conducted in a lab with petri dishes and skin cell samples basically tested snail mucin with these skin samples against lots of different types of bacteria. The really common ones that cause skin infections, things like Staph aureus or Pseudomonas. In doing so, they realized the snail mucin was actually protecting from these quite serious skin infections, showing that there are actually Actually ways you could probably apply this for more serious skin condition. But again, this particular study was done in a lab, not on any real human, so you don't really know the effects that a real human skin would have. Again, I have another lab study that talks about the anti-melanin properties of snail mucin. They basically found that the snail mucin had some tyrosinase inhibitory activity, stopping the pathway of melanin production, which is what causes hyperpigmentation. But it was conducted again in a lab with a relatively small sample size, so it's not really proven yet. So to sort of summarize what's been proven about snail mucin, it definitely has hydrating properties. It has antimicrobial, antibacterial properties that help with acne and inflammatory skin conditions. The barrier repair function helps hold in hydration. If you're suffering with really inflamed acne or something like that, that will help protect it and help it heal. It doesn't have huge proven effects for things like fine lines and wrinkles, but having good hydration, we know definitely helps that in the long term. Now I'm going to talk about the products that snail mucin are available in and this is by far the most popular this advanced snail mucin 96 power essence the 96 refers to the percentage of snail mucin in this product like i showed you earlier it's just so sticky and like weirdly stringy i don't know how i feel about that but i kind of like it it's fun and the stickiness, it just wears off as soon as you rub it into the skin, look, you'll see. And it stops being, well, it's still a bit stringy, but eventually it just sinks into the skin. It reminds me a lot like any sort of hyaluronic acid serum, and it just sinks into the skin really, really easily. So it pairs really well into any skincare routine. This is the full ingredients list. It's relatively minimal. It's mostly snail mucin and a few other bits and pieces to support the structure of snail mucin. Now, anything that is super organic or super natural has a tendency to break down very quickly so it is very important that it's got some of these stabilizing and preservative ingredients i'm always really apprehensive about anything that says 100 percent anything it's really important to have preservatives in skincare so it lasts a long time now you can see how much i've got through about two-thirds of the bottle over the last three months and that's me using it almost every day i think i kind of love it it's the perfect level of stickiness and it just does dry down completely easily and you can apply any other skincare on top of it for me, it pairs really well with other acne fighting ingredients. Now, because most acne fighting ingredients are super aggressive or drying, this works really well because it has kind of the soothing properties that work in conjunction with that. It also doesn't smell of anything. I expect anything that's natural and 96% organic to smell weird, and I'm glad it doesn't. I kind of thought it would smell like earthy or damp, but it doesn't. 
Now, COSRX have another snail mucin product that I am quite intrigued about. They have a whole line, but the thing that I've got my eye on is this double serum. Now, one side is the snail mucin, I'm guessing quite similar to this, but the other side is basically a niacinamide serum. Now, I've been using a niacinamide serum before I used the COSRX. I like the idea that you might have a two-in-one. I don't always love two-in-one serums, especially the ones that would sort of double pump. And that's because I feel weird about having to mix it myself. And I feel like it wouldn't always lead to even distribution of the product. I always prefer if it's already kind of pre-mixed, but we'll kind of see how it goes. Now, how do I use this in a skincare routine? So I use this in a really similar way to hyaluronic acid because I feel like it has very similar texture. It's very watery, water-based, and kind of plays well with other skincare. I will always wash my face and then I'll go in with this Centella water toner from COSRX as well. You can see I bought this around the same time and I've gotten through almost a whole bottle. Again, nothing super, super special, but just a water mist that I will always sort of use each day in between skincare steps and as soon as I come out of cleansing. I will go in with this and then apply the snail mucin afterwards. Sometimes I would prefer to incorporate some niacinamide into my skincare routine. So actually I can use the mist, use the niacinamide serum. At the moment, I really, really like the Naturium niacinamide 12% and zinc. This is my second bottle of this serum and I really like it. Again, a super lightweight sort of watery texture. So actually this little combination works really well for me. I just want my skin to look quite sort of bouncy and fresh and I think this does the trick. Ah, uh, where do I put this? Once the snail mucin dries down, you can kind of apply any moisturizer, whichever way you want. I've also been using a Hado Labo moisturizing cream and they also have a skin pumping gel. I feel like they're quite similar and they're all part of this sort of very watery type of skincare that I really like at the moment. What I like about the snail mucin is because probably the inky list is so simple, I don't get any pilling with any other skincare. The other way that I've been enjoying using snail mucin is actually after an exfoliating mask or treatment. So every Every now and again, I use this lactic acid radiance reveal mask from Votary. I really like this because it's a very, very gentle exfoliating mask. I don't like to do anything too harsh to my skin because I'm using prescription skincare to help with my acne. And that's why a mask works quite well because I do eventually just wash it off after 10, 15 minutes. This has very gentle acids in it, the lactic and mandelic. So what I'll do is use this, wash it off after 10 or 15 minutes, and then apply a really thick layer of that snail mucin. And that really just calms down any irritation you get from exfoliating and kind of stops you getting over exfoliation. So I had a couple of questions sent to me over on Instagram about snail mucin. Now the first one was, are there any negative side effects from using snail mucin? On the whole, I'm gonna say no. This is pretty much just a very gentle hydrating serum and can be used in place of things like hyaluronic acid. It doesn't have any exfoliating effects, at least this COSRX one doesn't. It means that it plays very, very well with other skincare. And I think actually it's suitable for all skin types. It's not like vitamin A or acids where you get a bit overexcited and then get irritated skin. You can probably use layers and layers of this and actually just get accumulating effect. Should I buy it for my wrinkly ass eyes? Look. For that particular study that looked at 45 to 65 year old snail mucin didn't help with periocular and perioral fine lines and wrinkles. But in that group of people, the wrinkles were probably very, very deep set. But I think if you started using this at a much younger age, when you don't have wrinkles that are quite as deep set, and it's more just dehydration, fine lines and wrinkles, this would help. And that's because the hydrating plumping effect of any hydrating serum like snail mucin would really help with that. By the way, guys, aren't you really proud of my hair? I used one of the um, heatless hair rod things last night and it's given me pretty good curls and I kind of like it. I have a really bloody expensive Dyson, so it annoys me that this very, very cheap tool produces curls pretty nice. Anyway, back to skincare. The next question was, how do I use salicylic acid with snail mucin? If we're talking about any kind of liquid exfoliant, most of the time they are very, very lightweight liquids, just like this one. This is a press and clear from Medicaid. I've talked about this before. I have a whole video about salicylic acid. Similar to this, there is the Paula's Choice BHA liquid. All of these liquid exfoliants are very, very thin liquids that you swipe on your face. They tend to go really well straight after cleansing your skin. And that's because you want to have a very good exfoliating effect for the top layer of your skin. Also because they're very, very thin. Now, if you were to apply this after this, the chances are that this 
BHA wouldn't really penetrate very well. So yes, you need to use salicylic acid first, you can then apply a mist or a sort of that hydrating water like that and then put the snail mucin on top. These two would pair really well together. For me, I find the Press and Clear not particularly drying, but I know if you've got slightly sensitive skin types, you'll find it a little bit irritating or drying and then snail mucin would probably work really well together. Now, there are so many people who love snail mucin and it's become a holy grail for so many people on Instagram, TikTok and YouTube. I do love it. It has so many different types of skincare ingredients and properties all incorporated into one serum. It's kind of fun to use. It is obviously not suitable for vegans and if you find it disgusting then don't, don't use it. I will continue to use it until the bottle's finished. I will definitely be looking at trying that double serum one just because then it might mean that I can skip using a different niacinamide serum in my routine. But for now, I'm gonna use the rest of this bottle and see how I do. I really like it and I will still recommend it to other people. If you like this video and you are interested in skincare, please hit subscribe down below. I like all things skincare and derm and science and I'm gonna try and make more videos this year.